Prove it. Go ahead, prove it. Maybe it's just a guy thing, but I don't really think so. I think all the different, I think of all the different ways we say, prove it. I want to be right. I want to be in control. I want to have what I want. So prove it. Prove it seems to be the theme that links our modern day rejection of organized religion through the desert temptations of Jesus to the wilderness temptations of the wandering Israelites all the way to the garden that God planted for Adam, whom he formed out of the clay of the earth and breathed life into him. Did God really tell you not to eat any of the fruit of the trees in the garden? The devil sows confusion by a leading question. The beginning of the lie. A subtle way of saying, prove it. Surely you won't die. The second lie. I'll prove it to you. If you eat, you will be like God. The third lie. Their free will begins to shake and buckle. Then it implodes on itself, and their original innocence is transformed into original sin, which is separation of their intimate relationship with God. They realized they were naked. There is another place where this trauma will be acted out. It's no garden. Rather, it is the wilderness, the desert, a harsh and empty waste. It is there that the Holy Spirit leads Jesus after his baptism. When the, when the Heavenly Father proclaimed to him, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The tempter shows up on the scene and says, Prove it. If you are the Son of God, prove it. Stones to bread. If you throw yourself off, have the angels catch you and land like some modern-day superhero. If you just prostrate yourself and worship me for a moment, you can have it all. My dear sisters and brothers, we have begun a 90-day journey from ashes to new fire, from the sin of the first Adam to the act of total obedience and righteousness of the second Adam, to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the beginning of the church at Pentecost. Each year, Holy Mother Church invites us into the story of our salvation. Each year, Holy Mother Church invites us through the Lenten gifts of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, to journey from ashes to new fire, from brokenness to wholeness, from lie to truth, from doubt to faith, from human weakness to spiritual strength. Why does Holy Mother Church do this? Because she loves us. Because she knows that from human experience, it is all too easy to be tempted by the lies of the world that separate us from the truth of God's love for us. Why does she ask this of us? It's because Holy Mother Church wants us to discover even more fully who we truly are, beloved of God, and not merely shameful, naked sinners. 
She wants us to be the best versions of ourselves. There is a group of parishioners who are on the 90-day Exodus journey and Magnify 90. Before they set out on their journey, they are asked to articulate their why. Why do they want to do this? Why do they want to embrace these asceticisms of fasting, not only from food, but also from screen time and social media, from news and from other distractions, and be led into a seeming desert? Why do they want to deepen their prayer life, spend extra time in the adoration chapel, Why do they want to deepen their fraternity and communion with others by being vulnerable and honest at a deep level of self-revelation and nakedness that leads not to shame, but to freedom? What might be your why for your Lenten journey? What has God put on your heart for this Lent? Where is the Holy Spirit leading you? If you have not asked yourself these questions, I invite you to do so this week. Take time to reflect, to pray, to see what the Lord wants you and for you this Lent, and where the Holy Spirit wants to lead you, just like he led Jesus. Is it spending more intentional quality time with your spouse and less on sports, hobbies, social media, gossip, work? Is it spending more time with your family in prayer, in human interaction at the dinner table, or simply in quiet with one another? Is it intentionally spending less money and not making unnecessary purchases so as to give to the rice bowl and the work of Catholic relief services throughout the world? Is it fasting from eating in between meals, not snacking, or eating out so as to be reminded of the the hungers of the human family. Whatever your why may be, know that you will be tempted not to follow it. Know that your best intentions will be undermined by the devil, the evil one, Whispering or shouting, prove it. Prove that you can do it. Prove that you can really change. Prove that you are strong enough, humble enough, patient enough, persevering enough, worthwhile in the eyes of God. Prove it. Oh, the tempter is so cunning and will seek any way whatsoever to feed you the lie that you are not good enough, that you are not worthy, that you don't deserve what God wants for you. Fullness of life, eternal life, now. My sisters and brothers, there is so much more that I could say about how the world is attacking Holy Mother Church by separating faith and reason and thereby twisting the gift of our free will into a false freedom that we can define our very selves in whatever way we want and do whatever we want without consequences. This only leads to greater separation from our Creator and greater sadness among ourselves. 
Why do we need Lent? Why do we need to set out on this 90-day journey from ashes to new fire? Quite frankly, if we don't, we will, we will merely be a heap of ashes. That is not what God wants for us. No, God wants us to be on fire, to be light for the world, to radiate God's love and help build the kingdom of God. Let us do so. One prayer, one fast, one, one alms gift at a time. This is how we prove it. Each of us here are all familiar with the reality of temptation, sin, and death. When we hear how our first parents experienced it, it shouldn't surprise us. It should only resonate with what we experience on a daily basis. Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. All of us are familiar with temptation, sin, and death. That's why we're not surprised again when the church throughout the whole world begins a season of penance to undergo in a more focused manner the conversion from our sins and an ever deeper resolution to fight against temptation. We never have to ask ourselves each, each year, should we have Lent this year? No, we know we need Lent. Yes, the season of Lent is upon us again a consecrated time when we go with Christ into the desert and how good and life giving it is to be with Christ and to fight against temptation. We must with Christ struggle against the devil if we are to overcome him. While all of us are familiar with temptation, sin and death, the first Sunday of Lent spurs us on. It reminds us that we must also become familiar with the victory in Christ over temptation, sin, and death. So how are we possibly to do this with strength for the next 40 days? I imagine many of you have already made resolutions for Lent. You've committed to fasting, abstinence, works of charity, and prayer in ways that maybe you wouldn't have if it weren't for the season of Lent. Well, there will be times in these next 40 days when you're going to want to drop those things off entirely. When you're going to hear the voice of Satan gently saying, go ahead, you've been doing great. Forget your fasting for a time. How good of an effect can it have anyways? And in many other ways, you'll be tempted not just to forget your resolutions, but also to sin in any of its forms that the devil proposes. What you're going to need to be successful in Christ, especially in those moments, is a reason why. You're going to need something to anchor you. You're going to need to develop your why. Have you answered that question since Lent started four days ago? You may have already answered the question, what? But have you answered the question, why? What you may have given up is chocolate, TV watching, social media, complaining, internet surfing, unnecessary purchases, wearing makeup, taking warm showers, etc. But why have you given these up? Or why are you to continue the good practices of almsgiving, prayer, and charity? I remember when I was running, uh, preparing to run in the annual turkey trot with my seminary community in Rome. It, we boasted that it was the only 5K to go around a sovereign nation, as from our front door around Vatican City, it was a perfect five kilometers. So I was training for this with a lot of gusto, and there were really, really difficult moments. I found myself running around the track doing intense speed workouts, but I didn't feel much encouragement, and I was so tempted to give up when it was getting difficult. I was tempted to take it easy. But I remembered in that time a couple who was really close to me, 
who was really struggling, who were really struggling. And the word divorce came up in their conversation and it just broke my heart. And from then on, I decided to pray for them more intensely and to offer the pain from my running workouts for them. And in those deepest moments of pain, I thought of them and asked God to keep them together. And this intention was the reason I felt like I could really give myself to my training. It was the why that I needed. Well, when the day of the run came, not only did I make a personal 5K record, but I won the race. But more importantly, that couple today is still happily together. Likewise, in the season of Lent, a time to convert our hearts to Christ, that we might have greater freedom. Likewise, to this experience, Lent, we are in a race. But it's a marathon. It's not a 5K. And in those difficult moments, you're going to need a why. Discern what that is for you. Discern what your why is. What is that call from God resonating deep within you? In what situation in your family are you begging for God's grace? What vice do you want freedom from? What is that obstacle that's keeping you from following your vocation to holiness with total acceptance, being totally in on that? Each of us should discern what that why is as we begin this first full week of Lent so that it can carry us through every week of Lent. Here are four whys that others have already discerned for themselves. I want to become spiritually fit, mentally fit, family fit, and physically fit. Another said, I want to be free for my wife, members of my family, my neighbor, both in church and at large. Another said, I want the past to stop affecting my present, to be freed from the sloth that I have come to enjoy and crave. I want to use my time better all the time. In this final one, I want to break my attachment to material things for my wife so that I can be lovingly present to her and be her anchor as the Lord has called me to be in my role as husband. I've also realized that patience is a virtue I need and desired for as long as I can remember. As I try to silence or better yet pacify my mind and my soul to remove all distraction, to allow God in, to work in me. These are beautiful examples of a why. You may already have discerned what your what is, but this week is a time to discern your why. Because when temptation comes, God's voice can actually speak more clearly to you and you'll find strength to overcome temptation. And you want to know something really inspirational? Jesus is why. How is it that Jesus could undergo such temptation? How could he endure being tried for 40 days in the desert? St. Paul, as we heard, wrote the reason as he reflects on salvation history from the transgression of Adam to the gift of Jesus. He says, But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? Why did Jesus go through with it? For the many. For you. You yourself are Jesus' why. You are the why for his enduring temptation in the desert. And not just through that. You yourself are the why for his enduring the struggles throughout his entire life. You are the why even for his enduring the most torturous suffering. Look at the stations of the cross. During Jesus' passion, he consented each moment to endure every human suffering imaginable. Each and every moment, he was saying yes to that, and he was doing it for you. For you, he says in each station. In the first station, I'm doing this for you. In the second station, I'm doing this for you. In the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, I'm doing this for you all the way to the end when he gave his life. 
I'm doing this for you. As you consider throughout this season of Lent the passion of Jesus, let Jesus' why encourage you and help you form your own why. Let Jesus be your strength so you can make it through these 40 days with him. And what greater encouragement and strength do we need than from the Eucharist? This sacrament which is not bread alone, but the word who proceeded from God, who we receive. And on the night before he suffered his passion, he spoke words that make sense of his whole life's mission of suffering in his body. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.